Hey guys, this is Dave with Audio In. Today I have three IEMs by Kiwi Ears, and all three are decent sets, but one of these sets in particular really caught my attention. As a matter of fact, it made my top picks list and dethroned one of my all-time favorite sets within its price category. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Okay, since I have three sets I need to go over, I'm gonna try to move through this as quickly as possible, but I will make sure and try to be as thorough as possible and touch on as many of the main points of the sound as I can. And just to keep things simple, I'll just go over them in order of least expensive to most expensive, and we'll start with the Dolce. The Kiwi Ears Dolce comes in at $25, and it comes with basically just IEMs, cable, and a set of small, medium, and large ear tips. They do not include a case. Not a big deal though, I guess, considering it's only 22 bucks. Now, this being a budget set that is kind of reflected in its general build quality, the IEMs and cable feel and look pretty nice, but they are no doubt made using budget materials. The driver is a single dynamic driver and the shell of the IEM is plastic, but it feels fairly robust and well made for, again, for this price range. The cable is also decent for the price. It's not the best budget cable I've seen, but it gets the job done. So right up front, I will tell you that this is a really good budget set. As a matter of fact, I've been listening to this set quite a bit and trying to kind of determine whether or not I prefer this over the Wan Er. And for those of you who don't know, the Wan Er has been my top ultra budget set for quite some time because of its tuning. It's simply exceptional at the $25 price point. And the Dolce didn't quite dethrone it. It was close, but the Wanner's base is just a little cleaner and the upper mids just a little smoother and more natural sounding. But to break the Dolce's sound down a little further, I would describe it as a V-shape with lots of bass and treble energy recessed mid-range, but still fairly balanced overall. It has good sub bass extension and pretty good treble extension as well, which is nice. And as fun tunings go, this is a pretty well-tuned budget set. But of course, there are the typical issues you run into with a V-shaped set, like lack of low and mid clarity and just general unnaturalness in the mids and upper mids. There's also some bass bleed that does muddy things up just a little bit in the lower mids. As for the higher frequencies, it does have fairly decent amounts of treble energy that can get a little hot or peaky at times. And while I wouldn't necessarily necessarily described as harsh, depending on what you're listening to, I did kind of find myself having a tendency to kind of turn it down quite a bit. And as for technicalities, again, they're just okay. Soundstage is not very wide, imaging lacks focus, and detail levels are about what you might expect for $25. And I did feel that the Wanner did just a little bit better in terms of detail. Not that the Wanner's technicalities are that great either. They have a lot of the same challenges most other old ultra budget sets have as well, but it did seem like I was getting just a little better center image than I was with the Dolce. That being said, again, as V-shaped tuned budget sets go, the Dolce is one of the better sets that I've heard. So it is a great set for the price for sure. Okay, and next we have the Cadenza, and this is also a single dynamic driver IEM. Included in the box are the IEMs and cable. They also include three sets of small, medium, and large tips. So definitely a much better selection of tips than we had with the Dolce. Now, 
I think I may have finally found my new favorite budget set of IEMs. Now, like I said, one of them stood out. This is the one that stood out to me. So if you've been following my budget IEM reviews, you'll know that for quite some time, the TKZK Oranos has been my favorite $50 budget IEM for a long time. And one of the main reasons I liked it so much was because of its tuning. And yes, like most ultra budget IEMs, it uses a single dynamic driver, it has a V-shaped tuning, but it is a very mild V-shaped tuning. And it actually has enough upper mid-range energy as to keep vocals and instruments from getting kind of buried or pushed too far back in the mix, again, which is kind of common with a lot of V-shaped IEMs. So because of that, the Aranos has been my top $50 budget go-to IEM, again, for quite a while. But now we have the Cadenza, which is only $35 and actually takes a very similar tuning approach to the Aranos, but adds just a little more sub-bass energy and also brings a little more treble detail as well. But just to break the sound of the Cadenza down a little more, again, so we have a mild V-shaped signature, but a little bit of a sub bass focus. We've also got some extra upper mid range energy as well that allows vocals to shine through very, very nicely. So even though you have a fairly significant amount of bass energy, it doesn't necessarily overwhelm vocals and the mid range presentation has a nice sense of clarity. It's not the most natural or detailed sounding mid range. Again, we are talking $35, but it's still probably the best I've heard under $50. So if you're looking for a set around this price range and you want something that is going to give you a little more vocal clarity, but not just vocal clarity, instrument clarity as well, then I highly recommend the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. I have to say this set really, really surprised me. Okay, let's move on to our last set, the quartet. Okay, as far as what's included in the box, we have the IMs and cable, of course. They also include a very basic case, a tool to change the switches with, and then a small assortment of tips. As for the price, specifications, and design, the Quartet comes in at $110. It has a hybrid driver configuration consisting of two balanced armature drivers and then two dynamic drivers. The drivers are housed in a resin shell and it seems to be fairly well built. The shells are a little on the chunky side, but they have a nice shape and fit my ears fine. As for the design, it's simple, but pretty cool, I guess. I'm not usually a big fan of purple, but that's just my preference, of course. I can, however, appreciate the design. And again, the quality of the finish and overall craftsmanship does seem to be quite good for this price point. Now, as far as the sound, so the Quartet has two tuning switches on the backs of the shell, and it gives you four different settings total to choose from. However, when you put both switches up, it sounds basically identical to having both switches down, but the other three sound quite different, different enough to count them as three different signatures. I prefer switch one down and switch two up, which reduces the bass and raises the upper mids. It's the most balanced of the four settings in my opinion, but it's still somewhat V-shaped and has a significant amount of warmth. So you don't really get a whole lot of low mid clarity. However, it's still at least on par with most IMs in this price range. And that warmth does add some richness and note weight to male vocals and instruments. As a matter of fact, no matter what signature you choose, it's going to have a pretty decent amount of bass, mid bass, and low mid presence. And the sound in general is going to be V-shaped. As for the treble, even, with my preferred switch configuration, it's still slightly overpowered by the bass and it comes across as just a tad veiled to me. That being said, there is enough treble energy to still cut through so cymbals and higher stringed instruments still shine through okay. It's just not necessarily enough to completely balance out the bass energy. So the overall signature is just a little bottom heavy, so to speak. Now, as far as the technicalities, treble and upper mid-range detail is decent for the price. My only nitpick would be in the lower mids. It's not just as clean as I would like it. The soundstage is about average width, which is okay. However, there isn't much in terms of forward depth. Instrument imaging and separation, I would say, is pretty good as well. Instruments can sound a little 
floaty and not just super focused. Now, as far as the competition, I still prefer the Magic One or even the Galileo. However, I do prefer the Quartet slightly over the Aria too with my preferred switch configuration, which again is switch one down and switch two up. So the Quartet isn't necessarily my favorite at $100, but I do think it's pretty competent for this price range. So that concludes my reviews of the Kiwi Ears Dolce, Cadenza, and Quartet. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. If you guys like my content, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you would please like this video, please share this video. I hope you guys have an awesome day.